Hello, Ragers. Oh, feels good, man. Now, I can assure you that I am not a sus imposter. I have successfully reclaimed my channel from my gang stalkers, aka the V1 thugs. And shout out to my boy Marcus from the creator support team. You're a real one, dog. I hate when YouTubers spend like five minutes talking about their lives at the start of videos, so I won't bore you with the details, even though I am obviously the sole reason why you clicked on this video and should be the main focal point, but I digress. However, I'll be addressing everything at the end of the video, mostly because I miss showing off my mediocre Destiny 2 gameplay. Anyway, now that the formalities are out of the way, let's get down to business. I will cut to the chase here. A guy like me spends a lot of time procrastinating looking at streetwear news related Instagram pages. You can take the man away from fashion Instagram, but you can never take fashion Instagram out of the man. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. I worked my ass off learning about streetwear and social climbing. I studied influencers, I made a plan, I studied Reddit, and I've noticed a lot of similar occurrences are current. I'm here to share my conclusions with you. I have drafted the quintessential blueprint that all the new streetwear brands need to follow in order to be successful, which is what we'll be exploring today. Initially, I thought that addressing my demons on Twitter would finally silence the voices, but I was wrong, hence why I am here. As much as I love the accounts Avant Space and Stay Grounded, some of the brands and gimmick garments that they post are straight ass and I can't help but laugh at them. It used to be a once in a while thing, but I've since started to see shitty brands popping up left and right every other day, usually pulling the same gambit. Release poorly designed products, send it to a bunch of celebs, or ask for promotion on a bunch of fashion meme pages, which will garner attention, usually negative but still drives traction to the brand, which will subsequently lure in potential gullible, conspicuous consumers to their accounts, where in turn they will more often than not buy their products. Now, I'm not hating on this method because it has clearly worked many, many times for a variety of people. It's a classic social climber, clout chaser, easy bait and switch tactic. Regardless, I'm sorry for how schizo I sound, I'm just excited to be making videos again. It was definitely a rough few months in the psych ward. But in this video, I'll provide some how to grow popular streetwear brands in 2021 methods, go over some of the most notable examples, and finally I'll share my opinions. That's the most important part. First and foremost, I wanted to address that this is not a new tactic. This has gone on for years now, and a notable example that you Zoomers will remember was when Kanye wore that Ass Club Mind Games hoodie in 2016, which was prime I will buy anything Kanye thinks about era. So him wearing that hoodie blew the brand to new heights. Now, Neek Lurk, inventor of product placement and creativity and originality, continued to capitalize off of that success by innovating his brand and following strict, optimal business practices that helped the brand stay so highly regarded and respected. Overall, I feel as if that really gave a lot of young, ambitious streetwear entrepreneurs hope, considering Ass Club was literally screen printed on Gildan, yet somehow ended up on Kanye West. It seemed like anything was possible. Also, as I'm writing this, the certified lover boy himself has been seen in the Fugazi ones, so rest assured that that will only continue to inspire young grinders. Moreover, this has continued to serve as a solid, fundamental strat for success throughout the years. Regardless of how shit your product is, if it is seen on the right person at the right time, there's a good chance you'll have to prepare to enter a new tax bracket in the coming days. Obviously, there are a lot of potential obstacles that can arise from the amount of attention that comes from this though, such as keeping up with the rush of orders that you promptly receive amongst other issues that a smaller brand may not be prepared to deal with yet. I won't go too into details about the specifics, as that's not the main focus of this schizoid rant, but you get the idea. And with that out of the way, I'll now go into some more recent examples. Some brands that have followed a similar pattern that you may have heard me talk about in my video on bootleg shoes are I Never Heard of You Before and Vogel Stand, aka the edgy ones and shitty ones respectfully. Also, the blueprint for this kind of shit is definitely Trevor's Fugazi. I'm sure most of you already know the drill with those, so I won't talk about them too much, but it's clear how much they've inspired other brands to go a similar route from bootleg shoe to actual brand. However, I've also seen a lot of gimmick, one-off, often meme-based products and brands such as Happy Accidents, who originally made the Chrome Farts related garments, and the Endless Endless Denim, which has definitely been naturally promoted by your favorite influencers who aren't being paid off whatsoever. Now, when it comes to the aforementioned I never heard of you before on Vogel Stand, it is impossible for me to navigate the inner workings of their complex minds, as they are truly enigmas and a mere fashion manlet such as myself could not handle such knowledge. But if I did have to guess, I would say that they were inspired by the bootleg craze, obviously Trevor and Fugazi, and, and followed a similar tactic to the Virgil 3% design method. Keep enough of the original thing so that people will have preconceived positive feelings towards it in a sense of familiarity, but change it enough so that it's still considered a new, original entity. I would make a reference to like Plato's theory of forms, but I will not, simply because that would be pretentious, and not because I don't understand it, because I do and I am very smart. 
Anyway, obviously these shoes would garner attention on their own, but in order to fast track that process and ensure their success, the product placement strat has worked wonders here. For instance, I'm sure you've seen the pics of Lil Yachty or Young Thug wearing the Rick ones, which attracted a lot of attention to the brand, same with how the based king of misogyny wore the I never heard of you before joints. Also, the mass influence of the cabal of fashion meme pages that control the fashion scene as a whole have definitely brought attention to these brands as well. And as previously mentioned, their drops being promoted on underground streetwear news platforms and accounts whose followers are often already very active and tapped in, definitely didn't hurt their growth and exposure. Again, nothing wrong with this, secure the bag by any means. Regardless of my beliefs, this method is tried and true, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, getting the attention of the masses is one thing, keeping it and getting them to consume product is a whole different meta. After releasing something as show-stopping, paradigm-shifting as these, you surely have to follow it up with something equally as groundbreaking, which is what a lot of bootleg shoe brands are trying to do now. I'm sure this wasn't prompted by anything whatsoever. And as you know, someone would be truly foolish and brain dead to garner such a following simply to throw it away. Like who would do that? Anyway, let's have a look at I Never Heard of You Before and Vogelstan's recent drops. Also, just clarifying, I'm not some cheap corpo shill. I'm talking about these brands because everyone else I know is tired of hearing me talk about this, so I'm forcing you internet to people listen instead. Anyway, taking a look at I Never Heard of You Before's recent collection, it is evident that I will need a band-aid after this because I just caught myself in all that edge. There's some Reddit Ahiago hoodie inspo, Undercover and Number 9 inspo, and of course OnlyFans inspo. Definitely a nice, coherent, meaningful collection that will be studied around the globe for years to come. This is pretty much about what I'd expect them to create. The epitome of an Instagram brand and accumulation of trends that we've seen throughout the past year or so. They've essentially hit all the boxes. They have Dunks, being easily one of the most popular shoes and bootleg silhouettes of last year. Also, a big Chungus reference, which is the pinnacle of meme culture and a highly regarded figurehead. A Vetmont Balenciaga-esque mock OnlyFans logo, which is surely filling their followers with PTSD after seeing their once high school crushes succumb to falling down the OnlyFans pipeline. And finally, a Bear Brick. Enough said about that one. Basically, to sum up my point in one sentence, this is the epitome of a popular Instagram streetwear brand. It has all the elements necessary to attract a sizable crowd, and funnily enough, I respect what they have done. Although there aren't really any risks here and it's pseudo edgy, they're clearly successful and have a good thing going on. It'll be interesting to see if their future endeavors continue to be successful and if they involve the brand further. I can see how it would be tough though, going from creating a simple bootleg shoe to then creating a full collection. Being lumped into the fad bootleg shoe box is not a good look and would be hard to break out of, so good for them for trying something that a lot of opportunists wouldn't do. Now, Vogelstand, on the other hand, doesn't have much in terms of substance and diversity yet. They aren't as far along as I never heard of you before, but they do have a couple extra garments on top of the Vogel ones that they've showcased. This hat looks like something Ian Connor would wear, I don't know why, that's all I think about when I see it, and I also don't know who that's meant to install, Ian or the brand. Whereas the shirt is a pretty typical graphic design is my passion, random logo Virgil Abloh placement. I don't have too much to say about it honestly, but to be fair, they are still relatively new and most likely still dealing with orders for their shoes. I'm sure it's only a matter of time before they release something more substantial or take the bag and dip. I know if I secured a bag that big, I would move to a cabin in the woods and you'd never have to hear my redditor voice again. Honestly, after breaking it all down, the shit is pretty streamlined. Might awaken something in me. Just gotta find an AliExpress and Taobao plug, then it's over for you all. Anyway, these occurrences in the streetwear scene have served as a pretty interesting case study. I find watching these smaller brands blow up or flop to be quite entertaining, and they've taught us a lot about consumer behavior and how to navigate this streetwear startup zeitgeist as well. When it comes to my thoughts, although I do find this shit repetitive, I definitely respect the ambition that it must take. Yes, it is easy to make fun of the shit and brush it off as deplorable, clout-chasing behavior, but in reality, there are people buying these johns and brands securing sizable paydays. I hope that someone comes along and changes the game soon, because I'm far too lazy. Although, I may go the fashion YouTuber route and drop some bland-ass cargo pants soon. Could be a pretty nice exit scan. But yeah, I'm pretty indifferent on the whole thing. I'll just be glad once the bootleg shoe fad finally dies out. Guy like me can only take so much. Let me know your thoughts if you agree with me, and if you don't, you will be blocked and reported. But that's pretty much the end of the main part of this video. Hopefully you found it somewhat interesting and it helped you dissociate from the burden that reality has put on you. Now for the real reason that you're here. Me. For real though, if you made it this far, I appreciate the support. Basically, with regard to my channel, I'm pretty stupid and ignored a couple security texts from Google, and then woke up one day to find that my YouTube account was posting some Bitcoin scam shit and that YouTube subsequently terminated my channel. It definitely sucks ass in a bad way, but I was in talks with the YouTube support team and they handled everything surprisingly quickly and easily. I had always heard nightmare stories about how unless you have a trillion subs, then you won't get a response from them, but honestly they were super helpful and I was really shocked at how quickly they were able to resolve everything. 
Regardless, I'm out of my seasonal depressive slump and will continue to shitpost on this channel whenever I feel like it. If you guys didn't know, I'm in my second year of university, and this past year being all online has taken its toll on the remaining milligrams of creativity that I had left, but thankfully I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm fiending to start creating content for myself again. Basically, expect me to be back on my grind this summer. Now, for my Instagram, I did post an explanation on there for why I haven't been posting, and that pretty much all still stands. I'll always be insanely thankful for everyone, and I'm sorry if I haven't replied to your DMs on there as I haven't been on that account that much, but I do truly appreciate everything. I didn't want to just sell out or go out sad. A Sigma male like me has to stray away from the pack and lead on my own. Again, thank you for watching. More shit posts on the way. Later, Ragers. Yo, Pierre, you want to come out here? Let me suck you back into my belly.